me, Rebecca, and I are here to talk about uh, software development as direct action. And then the, you know, the reason I'm rich is we don't have much time for a lot of reasons. There are big problems out there today, right? And they need solving. They need solving today. So in the next 10 minutes or so, to go into this talk, I'm going to try to show you how you can solve. But first, before we start with that, I want to introduce you to Professor Oni and to Mavis, and John Black, and Gamer Geek Guy, and all of these people. Um, these people have been accused by numerous different women of repeated sadomasochistic rapes. Now we know who they are because of this tool, a tiny browser extension called the Predator Alert tool. These 260 lines of JavaScript, this, this is the entire source, by the way, it's on this slide. This, these 260 lines spark years of debate, uh, catalyze hundreds of thousands of lines, of uh, criticism, of praise, of hope, of relief, of panic, across the blogosphere and in various different corporate boardrooms alike. So the Predator Alert tool is one example of what we've come to call direct action software development. The purpose is super simple, maximum social impact. And the method is simple, of uh, minimum quantity. So what is direct action software development? Well, first I'm going, to, I'm going to assume that you know what software development is, basically, right? You know what about what software development is? It's a pretty basic idea. Uh, write code, build apps, websites, other technology products for use by people uh, with smartphones and laptops. You know, writing code is, of course, the basic act of software development. There's no code, there's no software. But what is direct action? Well, we found that what people think direct action really is varies based on, bluntly, pretty much how much brainwashing they've really been subjected to over the life. So let me take a moment, briefly, just to describe what we mean when we say direct action. So when we talk about direct action, what we mean is any action that immediately addresses the root cause of a problem. That sounds pretty obvious, right? You know, like why would, you might even ask yourself, why would people spend time doing things that don't address the root cause of a problem? And we'll have to several reasons for that. You know, maybe certain actions aren't permitted by an authority, right? So some people will limit themselves only to the actions that they have permission to take. Maybe, for example, they don't understand or they misunderstand the root causes of a problem. And in this case, people will often take actions that they think will help, even if those actions are ultimately pretty pointless. They don't make much of a difference in the end. Maybe they don't have some resource that they need, right? So maybe they, they lack the skills or the knowledge or the materials to take immediate action. So here's some quick examples of direct action in the physical world. Is your free speech zone, for example, too far away from the gas and oil billionaires conference, right? Where you can move closer, make some rules, and you to. Are oil tankers barreling through your town? Maybe they're causing huge damage and explosions when they derail. They do derail. This is actually video from the North Dakota explosion not long ago. Um, barricade the tracks. Chain yourself to the barricade. So in most cases, tackling a problem with a direct action approach provide the most immediate solution. Now, it's also, of course, often dangerous. It may be illegal. It is most certainly going to be disruptive. If successful, I promise you, it will piss some people off. But at the end of the day, direct action is the single most effective and the most efficient thing you can do to make positive social change. Historically, no lasting social change has ever been accomplished without a direct action element. Not So, uh, back to software. Direct action software development is a translation of direct action to the digital realm. It is any code that immediately addresses the root cause of the problem. Code is action. Remember Professor Henry? So he's a member of a fetish dating website called In January 2012, controversy that had been brewing in the public community for years at that point, finally rose to national comments when women started to accuse numerous prominent public members of sexual assault. The response felt like management, uh, they deleted the survivors' postings, they edited them, they even threatened to ban them from the site for violating the public terms of use. So this went about as well as I'm sure you can expect, right? You know, news of the heavy-handed censorship spread like wildfire, and within a few weeks, uh, many more women had come forward with similar stories, uh, including some who accused the site's founder, John Baku, of sexual assault himself. 
Uh, once again, of course, those responses to believe in what I did for hosting to censor them. But by June of this year, uh, back in 2012, the topic of sexual assault that you know, was supposedly safe, sane, and consensual in the Asian community uh, it was flashing across the headlines of places like Salon.com, of The Observer, um, and many other national high profile media outlets. Now, activists from within the Asian community at the time, have been organizing consent cultural working groups for a while, and their membership numbers swelled as well. So, of course, rape is exceedingly common in the media sector. Now, in fact, even the community's own lobbying groups, such as the National Coalition for Sexual Freedom, um, by the way, one of their board members is also the community manager, or the community manager I felt like for some time, which is simply about as well as the community manager. Anyway, they admit, they admit to a 50% higher occurrence of consent violations. Uh, among the ESM practitioners and the general office. Uh, it's almost as bad as police officers, who also, statistically speaking, are up to twice as likely to commit uh, domestic violence offenses as the general office. So the BDSM scene has a self delusional belief that they are all about consent. But in reality, they're at least at least as bad as everyone else when it comes to sexual consent. Uh, and they're letting even a lot worse because of their pension for a lot of size of use. So there are many submissive people and women, seem to identify people and women within that community. We myself have been saying this for quite a long time, and we were forced to ignore it. So even during the height of this national debate um, about the BDSM community's consent crisis, the consent culture working groups were quickly leading. They had collectively decided that you know, something must be done. Um, what they decided to do was make a petition calling for the removal of laws and complex terms of use that the site's management was using as justification for censor and urgent. And as is often the case, when you must beg something from a master, you will find that they will not beg your request. Three years later, that right has still refused to change that policy, and they are still censoring their survivors, unless, of course, the survivors use the program. So in October of 2012, I realized that the root cause of that problem was really just that site management, that site management could control what users saw on the site when they were asked. But they got to control what was available and what they saw when they were on the site. But the internet, which as we all know, is made famous by this idea of mashups, allowed a unique opportunity to route around felt like censorship in a way that felt like couldn't control. So I wrote a simple mashup using uh, a public Google spreadsheet and some JavaScript that enabled uh, anyone to report a negative experience with a public member. And with a mere 260 lines of JavaScript, that information could then be overlaid directly on felt like Like this. So with the credit alert tool for felt like, the problem of felt like censorship all but vanished because felt like users can now warn one another about other predatory fund life members. But my site management could not do anything to stop it because it was not acceptable. Just a few weeks ago, we had a woman here, right here in Albuquerque, actually, who uh, had used the predator to, to report a local mass failure within a five year Now, users of the tool began to ask for the same kind of capability in other sites, like, of course, the famous dating website, and beyond that, of course, Facebook. And now there are seven different predator alerts with variations of this browser app, variations of this tool. Um, each one of these is designed to work with a specific social network or dating website. And importantly, none of these tools are developed in collaboration with the sites. Uh, uh, most sites have refused to acknowledge that this even exists, uh, despite reports from journalists and community members. And some sites are actively hostile, sending me personally DMCA Patreon requests, and even threatening predator alerts to users with damage from the site for using Meanwhile, the Already, the overwhelming positive response from the media community has, of course, continued to grow. So, the Predator Alert tool arose directly from the needs of the community that it serves. Right? And it enabled that media community to do exactly the thing that the authorities of that life didn't want to be done, or that the users of uh, the management of the people in Facebook didn't really want the users thinking too critically about. It. And, of course, it accomplished this just by implementing that capability rather than asking for permission to do so. Its impact is immediate and disruptive and dangerous. These characteristics are indicative of any direct action in software development. Yeah. So today, 2015, the petition proposed by consent culture working groups yeah. has uh, still not achieved its goal of stopping kind of play management from sensor and race survivors. Right where it works, was able to accomplish that goal in one night of coding with these 260 lines of JavaScript three years ago. In 2014, the Commons created a very lesson. Appeal to technologies to us, to you. The appeal to us to take up this cause of immediate direct action software development. He said, there is a movement out there that has enormous needs which you uniquely can provide. 
the obvious ones, technical ones. This is a movement that will only succeed if we find a way to knit together people in a different model from the television advertising model that public is today. This movement is start for people with your skill. You can figure out how to make this work. It desperately needs this type of skill offered by people who genuinely believe in the cause, as opposed to people who are just trying to get rich. So if you want to change the world, don't want to make a lot of money doing it, let's talk. We've been doing direct action software development uh, before we knew it was a quality, and we're going to keep doing it. And it would be wonderful to find some people who want to work with us. There are big problems out there, and we can solve them today. Thanks for your time.